Hey, what's up everybody? It's Isaac from Alchemy here with another episode of the Devlog. This time around, we're gonna talk about some new stuff on the platform like safety tools. We've got lines and veils, we've got content warnings, um, lots of good stuff on the safety side. There's a new marketplace design with scrollable rows of content. We've got some big tactical mode upgrades, including the ability to scale tokens and hide them from your players. Um, and we've got a preview of a video chat feature that's up for founders right now. If you have a founder account, you can check it out. We'll also be taking a few moments to talk about what's next. This week, we don't have any questions, but if you have a question you'd like answered on the show in the future, head on down to the description to get a link to that form where you can submit your question. All right, let's dive in. First up, let's take a look at the new safety tools. The first thing you'll wanna do is head to your user profile and click on the new safety tab. Inside of this tab, you can configure the lines and veils that you want to apply to any character you create, any game you join. Um, the GM of that game and all the players will be able to see the lines and veils that you've configured anonymously. There'll just be one big list of um, everybody's lines and veils. So let's go in and configure a few. We'll do bugs and blood as hard lines that um, I don't want to show up in the game at all. And then for veils, we'll put eyeballs, I guess. Um, and um, save these. And now, anytime I'm invited to a game, those lines and veils are going to show for the GM automatically. Now we've jumped over to my GM account, and I'm going to take a look at one of the games that I've invited that test account to. Devlog5 from last episode, I believe, has that account. Correct, it does. Now over here on the safety tab of the game modal, you can see all of the lines and veils that were configured by the players in this game. You only have to set this up once on your account and it'll apply in any games that you join. As a GM, you can also update your game settings on the safety tab to flag a game for mature content. If it uh, is perhaps not appropriate for all ages and you want that to be indicated on the game card itself, you can turn that switch on. And you can also configure individual content warnings that'll be displayed to anyone connecting to your game. Uh, so for example, we can put eyeballs and gore on this game and then save it. And we'll go over to my other account to try it out. Back on my other account, I'll go to my games library and find that devlog 5e game and join. And I'm presented with a content warning screen that shows me the content warnings that the GM had configured for this game. And I have to click on continue to game in order to get in there. This is a great way to improve the safety of everyone involved in your game and boost transparency in your game. So be sure to set up your lines and veils and use those content warnings when you have sensitive subjects. Next up, let's take a look at the new tactical mode upgrades. I'm gonna leave this game and jump over to my main account where I'm already in this new Devlog 6 game, and I've invited my test account to it already. I've also set up a few scenes to use here. We've got the dim light is our default scene. We've got the overgrown magic forest and the shadow fortress, both from the Chepeku map pack that's available on our marketplace. These are very cool scenes that include um, a special environmental art piece that was made for alchemy. And of course, the very cool Chepeku animated map that you can see here with this creepy crawly underneath the purpley stuff under the bridge and the approach to this shadow fortress. This game happens to be a 5th edition game, so I can go ahead and grab some NPCs from the 5th edition SRD. Let's get a few different sizes here. We'll take an Abaleth as a nice large creature. We will take a bat. This seems like certainly a bat scene. And let's get a cultist in here too, because this seems like a cultist kind of place. That'll give us a nice medium token to add. So we'll get all those NPCs added in there. And we can start to drop their tokens. Sometime soon, we'd like to add the ability to drag and drop tokens in, but for now, you still use the old click and token action to place those tokens out on the battle map. The first thing you might notice here is that this large aberration token came in uh, as a two by two sized token. So in fifth edition, um, the size of a token for an NPC will be based on the size of that character. If you edit it, you've got 
size large, 10 by 10. You can select anything from tiny all the way up to gargantuan, and we've included a handy reference on the side for how many grid squares each of these takes up. Let's add our bats and our cultist as well. So we'll put the bats over here. And the cultist right here in the middle. You'll notice that all of these tokens are kind of um, transparent, and that's because they're still hidden. You can see in the NPCs list, they're still listed as hidden as well. Now let's go ahead and add a token for the player, and we'll drop them right on the bridge here. And let's jump over to the player side. So as a player, I should only be able to see my own token. There it is. I can control that and move it around. I do not see the hidden tokens that are over here by the stairs. Back on the GM side of things, all I have to do to reveal those tokens to the player is click on them and click show. And that token will show up. It also moves it in the NPC list from hidden to visible. And if we go over here on the player side of things, we see that reflected on their end as well. And let's go ahead and just reveal the rest of these. We'll show the tiny bat, show that tiny bat, and show that cultist. And there we go. We've got all of those tokens visible and ready to ambush poor Jazz. You can also add any NPC you'd like uh, of a different size. We could create something from scratch here. We'll make a gargantuan Gary and we'll set his size to gargantuan, 20 by 20. And let's change the type from, uh, from humanoid. Let's go with giant. Giant is pretty cool. Also, he's gargantuan in size, so that makes sense. Throw his token out there, and whoa, that's a big one. We'll drop it back here. And on the player side, that token's not visible yet. Let's go ahead and show it. You can do it from the token. You can also still do it from the NPC menu like you used to be able to do. You just click on it, click show. Oops, I did not click the right button. Click on it and click show. And there it is, your gargantuan token ready to terrify your players. One thing to note is that in 5th edition games, player characters cannot change their token size um, because every player character is size medium in 5th edition. Um, so you're stuck with five foot tokens right now. However, in custom games, you can do whatever you'd like. So let's take a look at custom games. I'll jump back over to my main account and we're going to leave this game and create a new one. Let's create a custom game. We'll call my system devlog six. And I'll grab We'll be looking at maps, so let's add the Chapeku animated map bundle to this game to start with. And let's go into that game. I'll add my test account real quick. And we're off and running. Okay, we've got this Celestial Day map. Well, let's go ahead and create a couple of NPCs for this scene. So I'll jump in here and in a custom game, this one doesn't happen to have any templates created for it via a connected universe. So I'm just getting the empty character template for custom games. Um, let's make new NPC one and we'll give them a size of two by two. This token size field lets you select anything from half a grid square all the way up to six by six. So new NPC one has got the nice big two by two size. Drop this token down. You can just barely see the, the grid lines on this map. Not a great map to be demonstrating, but there it is. A nice new two by two token that we can also show. Um, and you can go in and change that on the token anytime. Just in this token size field, we'll make it a six by six. Wow. Look at that giant token. And you can add a few more of any size you'd like by repeating that process. We'll add a 0 0.5 by 0, 0 0.5 cat. Do I have a cat picture? Of course I have cat pictures. You can also set up differently sized characters for player characters. 
So we'll go ahead and click on my test account and click play to create a new character for them. And we will go ahead and give them a size of three by three. And let's say that they are some sort of uh, spooky ghosty guy. We'll just throw this image in there for them. Spooky ghosty guy. Three by three token for that player. And let's drop that on the board. There it is on the on the tactical map. There we go. So a three by three player token is available in custom games. Um, all right. Yeah, this is a this is a pretty new feature. So uh, expect there to be a few little uh, things with it as we work on it. But we're actively improving um, a lot of things about tactical right now. So things are changing quickly. The last thing to note about token sizing is that it's not available for pirate board games yet. Um, we felt like you didn't really need it for player characters. There are a few NPCs where you might need it, uh, but what you really probably want it for is resizing ships for naval combat. We don't really have great support for naval combat today, uh, but we'll be coming back through and cleaning that up for Pirate Borg soon. Okay, so that is the new features for tactical mode, including the ability to resize tokens and the ability to show or hide them from your players. Great upgrades to the tactical mode experience and expect more soon. The marketplace has been getting a lot of love lately. Let's take a look at what's new. We've got this new featured carousel from a couple of weeks ago. I believe I talked about that last episode. Great way to show some love to some featured stuff on the marketplace. And down below that, we've got all of the content from our marketplace is now organized into categories. So we start out with the new arrivals up on top. This is all the stuff that is new to the platform recently released. Below that, we've got settings and systems adventures, NPCs and items, and story assets. Each of these rows will show you more stuff if you scroll through and take a look at all the cool new stuff that you can get. We have lots more planned for the marketplace in the coming weeks, so expect to see more ways to browse and discover great content soon. Next up, let's talk about a few of the quality of life features that we've rolled out, some of the smaller fixes over the last two weeks. Um, we heard from a lot of you about the universe asset size limit when you're uploading assets to a universe. 10 megabytes is not enough. We agree with you, definitely not enough for us. It's not enough for you. So we've up upgraded that uh, size limit from 10 megabytes to 25 megabytes. So your assets that you upload to your custom universes can now be up to 25 megabytes in size, giving you more room for those long, longer audio tracks or for animated maps and the like. Last episode, I spent some time talking about a new feature that allows you to embed characters and other universe objects inside of the markdown in a universe article or any other markdown inside the app. So let's take a look at the changes to that this week. I'm going to go ahead and create a new universe for this. Fifth edition is fine. And let's create an NPC. We will call them new character. No need to get too exciting about that. And last week you saw me copy a bunch of IDs from these objects and then do some serious keyboard maneuvering to uh, paste in a bunch of markdown code to get these embedded. We have removed the copy ID function that I used last week and replaced it with a copy embed code option. And clicking on that is going to copy the full markdown embed code that you need to stick that character inside of an article. So let's try that out. So now if I paste, I've got the full code that I need to make a button for this character. There's their ID, and here's the markdown syntax that we have for creating a button. We'll call that new character. And there's our button to pop open that character sheet for the new character. No markdown keyboard shortcuts necessary. Just copy that embed code. We also have several other quality of life improvements and small changes to the platform that are live today. Head on over to our Discord or take a look at the in-app release notes that you can get from this What's New button to find out more about what has changed. 
let's take a look at something brand new and kind of secret that is in a beta test period for our founder accounts only. So if you have a founder account, I'm excited to let you know that you can now enable video chat for your games. If you don't have a founder account, don't worry, we'll be bringing this to everybody soon, but we're giving founders a sneak peek at how this works um, so that they can be the beta testers for this new feature, give us feedback, see how it works, and let us know so that we can improve it before it goes out to everyone. Let's take a look at how it works. Let's head on over to my games library and edit the settings for this Devlog 6 custom game. If I scroll down to the game settings, I can turn on voice chat, and there's a new field for founders only right now called video chat. Turning this on will enable alchemy video chat for the game. Let's save the game settings and take a look at how that works. Now I'll go ahead and launch this game. And the first thing you may notice is there is a new button down here in the party panel, a little arrow button. What this will do is slide out a new drawer that has your camera settings as well as some camera frames for the connected players. This is a beta feature, very early preview. We just have it fixed with five camera frames here at the moment, but I'm sure we'll be making this much better in the future. So this button down here is going to enable or disable when it's got the red strike through it, your camera. And you can also use this arrow to select a different camera, much like you can with the microphone button down here. So I'm going to go ahead and join this game from my iPad that's down here on my desk. And it's asking me to allow access to the microphone and allow access to the camera which I have said, okay, go ahead. And there I am on my iPad. Hello down there, a very flattering view, I'm sure. So now we can see my iPad's camera up here from um, my test account and see all the cool video stuff that they've got going on on that iPad. And on the iPad, I see my camera feed that you all are seeing. Um, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, up there on the, on the, wow, yeah, cool. Little um, Malkovich moment for you all. Very exciting. So yeah, um, camera frames, super basic video chat. It's working. Um, I've got the, the, the audio piping through, which you're probably actually hearing an echo of now, which is, oh no, both my mics are muted. That's good. Um, so yeah, if you're a founder, you can enable this for your games and then non-founders can join your game and use it, but it's only um, enabled for games that founders have created. So have a look at those settings if you're a founder and uh, tell us what you think about it. Tell us how it works for you, what's not working, uh, performance is especially an important thing to look at here because you know with an animated battle map you've got motion overlays you've got video chat going um, things could get a little wild so give that a try let us know what you think and we're excited to hear more about it if you're a founder and you're not on our discord you should be because you get a special role there you have a private channel where you can chat with us um, we'd love to hear your feedback on this feature so that we can dial it in for the rest of the folks um, the other thing you can do with this is close it. If you're tired of looking at the uh, cameras for people and you don't want to see those anymore, you want to get back into the experience of, you know, the immersive experience of alchemy, just close that drawer and get back into it. You can also turn off your camera here, which I'll do over on my iPad as well. Oops, tapped it multiple times. And get that stuff out of the way. Get back to immersion. Again, just to reiterate, this is only available to founder accounts right now, and we're out of founder boxes. There will be no more founder accounts, um, so there's not really any way for you to get this early if you're not a founder, unfortunately. Uh, but rest assured, we're bringing it out to everybody very soon. Okay, that covers what's new this episode. Like I said, there's a bunch more um, smaller quality of life fixes that you can find in the release notes, either in the app for this week, or you can find a historical log of all of those change logs on our Discord in the release notes channel. We post those every Friday when we stamp a new version of Alchemy, so head on over to the Discord to see that historical log. 
As for what's coming up next, let's take a look at the list. So we're hard at work on some tactical mode upgrades. We've got a lot more coming there, including the ability to adjust the scale of the map and the grid. We've got tokens scalable now. We need maps and the grid to adjust as well so that you can take that giant map and make it more manageable or that tiny map and expand it out for your tokens to fit at a nice scale. We'll also be working on snap to grid if you want to have your tokens snap to the grid automatically as well as some adjustments to the grid itself so that you can make it more visible on different types of maps. We are also jumping back into a piece of code that's near and dear to my heart, the character import and export process. A few weeks ago now, we added trackers to custom games, pirate board games, fifth edition games, so that you could track arbitrary values on your characters. Those never made it into the JSON import and export and um, the D&D Beyond import process. So we'll be jumping in there to update that with the latest and greatest data model changes and making those available to third-party developers, as well as the D&D Beyond import process. We also have some great new marketplace features coming. Very soon, you'll be able to click on these creator names here, like Tabletop Audio or Dungeon Scribe, to view a complete list of everything for sale by that creator on our marketplace. Great way to browse and find all the cool stuff from these amazing creators. We're also working on some new custom game mechanics to improve the experience for games that use dice pools and push mechanics like many of the Year Zero Engine games. Um, so look out for new action types to support those soon. And of course, the video chat preview that's available for founders today will continue tweaking and improving that process uh, so that we can make it available to everyone here very soon. All right, one more thing. If you're going to be at PAX East, which is happening in Boston, from March 23rd to March 26th, come see us. We will be on the con floor. If you haven't gotten a badger already, it looks like Saturday badgers are sold out right now, but you could come see us Thursday, Friday, or Sunday. Our booth is over in the 10,000s section. We are 10091, right around the corner from Hit Point Press. Uh, so come see us. We will have some live games happening in the booth. We have two GMs who will be running games like every hour, um, to use alchemy in person and try it out yourself. And we'll also have some other goodies in the booth. So be sure to stop by booth 10091 at PAX East and say hi. All right, I said one more thing, but there's actually one more, one more thing. We're excited to announce today that alchemy version one is coming to Kickstarter soon. We are about a year into early access, and we've rounded out a lot of the features that we wanted on our version one roadmap. So it's time for us to move into the new phase of Alchemy. You can find a link for this landing page down below. You'll be able to click this play button and watch a teaser trailer on YouTube, as well as click the get notified on Kickstarter button where you can go to the page for this on Kickstarter, click the save button to get notified, you won't want to miss this. We're going to have some really cool exclusive stuff on the Kickstarter. So make sure to mash that button and uh, get notified when we go live. All right. That's all I've got for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Now let's go play some games.